you know, we've already talked some about pandas and how it's easy to move data into pandas, uh, examine it, manipulate it a little bit, but ultimately we need to make the transition to uh, a package called NumPy. This is all about uh, very efficient representation, very efficient uh, operations on a variety of uh, tensors. So, so the, we'll spend a few minutes and right now talking about how to how to do that transition from pandas to NumPy, and and then indexing of NumPy tensors in in general, and then uh, we'll do a little bit of manipulation where we're doing things like combining vectors together to create um, ma matrices, and the the idea is just to give you a sense of what kinds of things are possible from within NumPy. As I've already talked about, it's important for you to go into the documentation and really see what the range of possibilities uh, is in uh, working with NumPy arrays. Okay, so we're, we're still in our context where we have our infant data already all loaded up. And uh, let's first extract a, uh, a one dimension from our pandas object, our data frame object. So infant data, and we'll pull out the time. So, so in, if I just execute this, then what T ends up being is uh, a reference to a new data frame object that includes just the one time column. But I can also ask for the values associated with that column, and, and those values are represented using NumPy. So let's execute that. Oh. Uh, it's dot values, not dot value. And now we can ask what is in our T. And you'll see that we have a, a one dimensional array here. And in fact, we can ask what its shape is. And all shapes within NumPy are tuples. Tuples in Python, if they have just one element, you're always going to write them this way with the, with a Pren surrounding, of course, but the value and then a comma. If you leave the comma off, then that means something else. However, if you have multiple uh, dimensions in your tuple, they just need to be comma separated and you don't need the trailing comma. Okay, so in, in some sense, because this is a, a one dimensional tensor, we can think of this as a vector. Now let's also extract the data associated with the left wrist entirely. So we're going to create a new data frame that contains just the left wrist columns. And that, so this returns a, a new data frame and then we can ask directly what the values are associated with that. So I'll execute that. And now let's at, uh, look at what the shape is, what, what we have for a shape. And you'll see now, instead of a, a vector, we actually have a matrix here. So there are 15,000 rows in this NumPy array and three columns. And we can even look at what's inside of this array. So, it, so if we just type that variable name, it's going to print out the, the first few rows and the first last, uh, first few rows and the last few rows of, of this particular matrix. I can also ask, say, index the, the zeroth row. The first index is the, the, the row index. If I execute that, you'll notice that it gives me a, a vector that corresponds to the, the elements in the first row. We can also ask for specific row column pairs. So one way to index this is like this, whoops. So this is a NumPy matrix. This is a NumPy vector. And now we're going to access the, the number two element in that NumPy vector. And that's uh, our negative 0.092, which, which is this element right here. Now we can uh, shorten up this notation. So an alternative that's a little bit more intuitive is this. So we're accessing column zero, sorry, row zero, column two. So we end up with the same value. 
Now we don't have to just index individual elements. We can actually extract slices from our matrix. So let's extract a particular slice. So what this says is give me rows zero through nine. Again, it's inclusive zero, exclusive 10. And then the colon here says, give me all of the columns that are available. So there, there we go. There are our first 10 elements of, uh, of our matrix. We can also take slices of, uh, along both rows and columns at the same time. So what this says is give me the first 10 rows and the first two columns. And, and there we go. This notation actually can be shortened up even a little bit more. So by saying colon 10, there's an implicit zero on the left hand side and colon two, again, an implicit zero. And that gives me the same sub matrix. We don't have to just access ranges of values within our matrix. We can also access very specific uh, rows and, and columns. So I'm going to ask for rows 100 to 119, but columns 0 and 2. So this is different than what we had before with the 0 colon 2 that resolves to 0, 1. Now I'm specifically asking for columns 0 and 2. And you'll notice that uh, uh, now I'm, I'm getting a set of values along here that look a lot more like our, the, the Z values that, uh, that, that we saw earlier in, in the histogramming. Okay, so let's extract out uh, individual dimensions from here. So uh, what this says is give me all rows but the zeroth column, so that corresponds to our x dimension. And we'll do the same for y and z. Oops. It helps when you spell things correctly. There we go. So as we did with the time dimension, the shape uh, explicitly tells me that I have a one-dimensional tensor here. Now there, there are times where I, uh, where we have one-dimensional tensors and we want to be able to combine them together to, uh, to form a matrix. So let me uh, do an example of that. Uh, there is a, an operation called concatenate within the NumPy package. And it takes one parameter, which is a list of the elements that need to be concatenated. So let's concatenate X and Z together here. And, and now ask what uh, mat.shape is. Okay, so we might have been expecting uh, 15,000 rows still, but now two columns. What concatenate has done is it, it's seen that we have two different vectors and by default, what it wants to do is uh, combine these two different vectors together in, in uh, lengthwise. So that's why we have uh, 30,000 uh, element vector uh, instead of the, the matrix that we were looking for. So in order to combine two vectors together in order to form a matrix, we first have to convert the vectors over to being um, matrices. So let's actually, let's do that. So if I say x dot reshape, um, give you the code and then go from there. So, so what this does is it says, take this tensor x and return a new tensor that is reshaped uh, such that the number of rows is, is uh, unspecified. We'll, we'll let reshape figure out what that should be, uh, but the number of columns is one. So this feels a lot like a, a vector, but it actually is a, becomes a, a two-dimensional uh, object. So let's uh, 
we'll assign a variable to that and then ask what new x is. And looking at this, it may or may not be obvious that we now have a two-dimensional uh, tensor here, but I can ask new x what its shape is. And you'll see now uh, we have 15,000 comma one. So it's now a two-dimensional tensor as opposed to x, which was just a one-dimensional tensor. Okay, so that sets us up to to try this out. So let's reshape these. So, so what we're doing here is handing it two, uh, two matrices instead of two vectors. And we'll, let's see what, what the resulting shape is. Ah, okay, so we ended up with still a 30,000 element long. Uh, it's, it's not a vector, it's actually a, it's actually a matrix because there are two dimensions, but we, we still have 30,000 elements as opposed to 15,000 by two. And that is resolvable um, because concatenate doesn't know which dimension it should be concatenating along. So it's default uh, axis of concatenation is along the zero axis, but we can also ask it to concatenate not along the rows, but the, this, the one axis, which corresponds to the columns. So let's execute that. And now we end up with a, a matrix that's the shape that we, uh, that, that we wanted, the 15,000 by two. Now num NumPy offers a whole variety of different kinds of operations. There are uh, other concatenation types of operations. There's something called H stack, another one called B stack for horizontal and vertical stacking. So those are things that, that you might uh, take a look at in, in the documentation. But in general, I do encourage you to, to look at the NumPy documentation and to see what all you can do with it. And, and, uh, and that'll set you up uh, very well as we get ready to, to move on into our machine learning methods. Next up, we'll look at some plotting.